Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast for March 4th. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you are interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. Historically speaking, March 4th is a very important day in U.S. history. It was the date that was set for the inauguration of the United States presidents. In 1793, the Electoral College elected Washington, George Washington, unanimously for a second term, and on this day, he was inaugurated for the second term in the Senate chamber on Congress Hill in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with John Adams as his vice president. In 1801, Thomas Jefferson, who had been the principal author of the Declaration of Independence in 1776, became the third president of the United States. In 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was inaugurated as the 32nd President of the United States, pledging to lead the country out of the Great Depression. Up until 1953, all presidents were inaugurated on March 4th, with only a few exceptions. The following presidents were not inaugurated on March 4th for differing reasons, including natural death, assassination, etc. of a previous sitting president. George Washington, his first term, John Tyler, Millard Fillmore, Andrew Johnson, Chester Arthur, Theodore Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, and Harry Truman. In 1953, the date for presidential inaugurations was changed to January 20th, which continues even today. In 1902, AAA, the American Automobile Association, was founded on this day. Almost immediately after the first horseless carriages appeared on America's roads, motorists began organizing automobile clubs. In 1902, only 23,000 cars were in operation in the country, compared to 17 million horses. Yet 50 small motor clubs had been formed by motoring enthusiasts across the country. Nine of those clubs joined together to create a national motoring organization and on March 4th in 1902 in Chicago founded the American Automobile Association. More than 100 years have passed, but from its inception, AAA has dedicated itself to the future of transportation through support of safe, efficient highways and multimodal transportation system that is accessible and affordable to everyone. At the turn of the century, existing roads had been designed for the horse and buggy, not the automobile. Traveling on those dirt paths was often risky, and AAA's earliest goals was to lead a fight for improvements in the nation's roads, ones which could better accommodate automobile traffic. Auto breakdowns have always been a source of frustration to car owners. In 1915, AAA was the first to introduce a service for stranded motorists, and it is now one of the most valued features of a AAA membership. Calls for roadside assistance averaged $29 million annually and is coordinated through a network of nearly 13,000 contract facilities. To ensure members receive reliable and quality workmanship and auto repairs, AAA developed its approved auto repair program, which has identified 8,000 automotive repair facilities that meet AAA's stringent criteria in customer satisfaction, equipment requirements, and competency in performing automotive repairs. In 1952, Ernest Hemingway completed his short novel, The Old Man and the Sea. He wrote his publisher the same day, saying he had finished the book and that it was the best writing he had ever done. The critics agreed. The book won the Pulitzer Prize in 1953 and became one of his best-selling works. Hemingway was born in 1899 in Oak Park, Illinois, started working as a reporter for the Kansas City Star in 1917. When World War I broke out, he volunteered as an ambulance driver for the Red Cross and was severely wounded in 1918 on the Austro-Italian front while carrying a companion to safety. He was dedicated and sent home to recuperate. Hemingway married the wealthy Hadley Richardson in 1920, and the couple moved to Paris, where they met other American expatriate writers, including F. Scott Fitzgerald, Gertrude Stein, and Ezra Pound. With their help and encouragement, Hemingway published his first book of short stories, In the U.S., in 1952, followed by The Well-Received, The Sun Also Rises, in 1926. The novella, which was first published in Life magazine, was an allegory referring to the writer's own struggles to preserve his art in the face of fame and attention. Hemingway had become a cult figure whose four marriages and adventurous exploits in big game hunting and fishing were widely covered in the press. But despite his fame, he had not produced a major literary work in a decade before he wrote The Old Man and the Sea. The book would be his last significant work of fiction before his suicide in 1961. 
You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast for March 4th. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you today to the following websites for the information regarding the topics. ThePeopleHistory.com The AAA Newsroom at AAA.com Old Man in the Sea at History.com The music used as a background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on Incompetech.com. If you enjoyed this information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing as this will help keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.